Hey everyone, Cody here, and today I'm going to show you how to paint like Jackson Pollock. And I know I have similar videos on this channel about this very topic, but none of those videos really show you from beginning to end how to make this type of painting. I simply talk about the brush strokes and the paint and stuff that I use, the tools. And so I figured it was high time for you to see how I make Jackson Pollock style paintings. So in this video, I'll talk about a lot of things, um, both the technique and the tools and the materials. Um, and then we'll kind of talk about at the end what I did wrong. And I say that because I already knew it was going to happen, but in order to get this video done, I just kind of had to do it in one fell swoop. So anyway, let's begin. So the first thing that you'll notice is that I'm starting off using uh, gloss enamel, right? That's pretty much my MO is using gloss enamel on all my paintings. Now, there's sometimes where I use acrylic, but it's very rare. Uh, but this is this this black is actually not the the common paint that I use. It's actually a paint that I got on sale, but I didn't end up liking it. I was just trying to use it up and get rid of it. Uh, but you'll notice that on the, on the first paint, like the first bucket of paint, I was using the paint stick to make these really uh, thick and thin lines. So I, f I really like using paint sticks as my main uh, tool because you can, you know, it's got a nice length to it so you can you can swing it you can trip it uh you can do a lot of things with it uh and since it comes with the paint usually it's very easy to obtain them uh next i moved on to blue uh and this blue that i'm using is a dark blue almost like a navy blue and i'm using a rubber spatula that has the little rubbery part at the end and i say that because you're going to see that i'm going to use a different one after this now this was my go-to tool for a long time when I was still doing Pollock style paintings. I don't really do Pollock style paintings anymore. I really just did this for the video so that people could see the process because I've talked about it, but I've never really shown it. Um, but yeah, this was my go-to tool is the, you know, using the plastic handled spatulas with the big, with the thicker, rubber end at the end um, but again I've kind of grown to like using the wooden paint sticks just because they give you so much control um, but they're great for splashing or dripping because the the spatula has that that end on it that kind of collects the paint and then you can kind of throw it um, if you do it with the stick it's a lot thinner you know swipes uh, and piles so here you can see that I'm, I'm really kind of throwing it to create big drops. And I know that the, the painting is not zoomed in, so I do apologize. Uh, but hopefully you can kind of see the pieces as they're made. Really, it's not so much about the little pieces, but the action itself. And see, a lot of people criticize Jackson Pollock paintings for, for what they see when they look at it. But really, it's not about the Jackson Pollock painting and, and really what you look at, a lot of it has to do with the action of making the, pa making the painting. And what Pollock talked about in his interviews is that for him, painting the piece was as much as the piece itself. And I think that that's very, uh, that makes a lot of sense, especially when you make this style of painting. So it's not about just a bunch of drips and lines and splashes. It's more about the work that you're putting in to make it. So it's more about the action, really, than it is the finished piece. So now I've moved on to orange. And the reason I'm using these colors is because I was using the colors of two of his more famous paintings, uh, Blue Poles and Convergence. And so I kind of wanted to use similar colors in making this painting that I could show you guys. So you can see that I here I'm using a different type of rubber spatula. So this one here is a it's a thin, full like I guess uh, it's covered in rubber, um, but the whole thing is covered. It doesn't have like a plastic handle 
with a thick end on it. It's literally the whole thing is just like a soft rubber uh, that's that makes it into like one thin piece. I think I got it at like Walmart or Michaels or something. Um, but it, it is a rubber spatula, but the whole thing is covered in rubber. So instead of it being like the other one where it's two pieces, this, this whole thing is the rubber spatula. So I, I don't know how to describe it um, <laughs> in a way that makes sense. Uh, but anyway, so... Next, we're going to move on to uh, yellow. And you it's hard to see, but I am wearing gloves. Um, always wear gloves when I use gloss enamel. It destroys things. So we've got a bright yellow here, and I am using... Now I'm just using the back of a paintbrush. So this is this was a common thing that uh, Pollock used. He used you know the back of paintbrushes. He even used sticks. Um... So here I'm using the back of the paintbrush, and this is actually how I started making these paintings was using the back of paintbrushes, and then I kind of branched out and tried other things. Um, what's nice about the paintbrush is that it can give you some really thin lines, and you can flick it very easily. So it creates very big uh, erratic splashes. So that's what's kind of nice about using the back of the paintbrush. Now, I'd like to talk about two things before I forget uh, and get to the end of the video and I didn't cover them. So the first is one thing you will not see me use that Pollock tended to use was turkey basters. Um, and I'm not talking about the ones that you stab into the turkey, but the, the big bulb ones. So they have like the bulb at the end and then they have the, the glass or the plastic tube. Um, I will not be using that because I've found that it just ruins them. And anytime I've tried to do it, it's never worked out for me. I'm trying to suck up the paint and then splash it on there. So I, I don't even bother. Um, plus that's, you know, I'm not trying to be Pollock. I'm just trying to, you know, create something similar because, you know, I, I revere him. So uh, you will not see me use that, but that is another tool that he used a lot. The second thing is that I did not let these layers dry. And so that was the thing that I was going to talk to you about that I made a mistake on. So normally when I make these paintings, I will, uh, well, two things. One, when I make these paintings, I'll let them dry because it, it's usually hotter outside. I mean, it, I'm recording this in February and it's cold outside. So the paint did not dry before I moved on to each next layer. In a normal circumstance, like if I were to make one of these, I would let the paint dry at least a little bit to kind of give it a, a little bit of a shell or else all of the colors just start to run together, which you're going to see at the end when I pan out. Okay. Um, so here, you, you know, you can see that I moved on to white. White is the last color that I'll add and then I'll kind of stack on a little bit of the other colors. But even here, the black and some of the other colors were starting to bleed together. So it's kind of making this pool of colors and Yes, it kind of has its own look to it that's kind of cool, but at the same time, it, it kind of ruins the painting, for, at least for me, because I don't I like seeing the distinct layers, um, so it, it kind of ruined it for me. But um, again, I'm just using the paint stick here, using white, and then pretty much to finish this painting off, um, I would just go over it again with some of the colors until it had the balance that I was looking for. Um, so, I mean, that's really it. So these are a lot of, these are the main tools that I use to create these Pollock style paintings. Um, really, it's it's kind of like dripping it, you know, like like you see here. Um, let's see, what time is it? It's at 9-11. So, well, that's a terrible time. Anyway, uh, you can see that I'm just kind of running over it to create some some almost like cursive looking lines, right? Some curves. But then, you know, you'll also go overhand to create the splashes, or you can throw the paint on, or you can just kind of drip it. Doesn't matter, right? It's your painting. Um, and I actually ended up destroying this painting, to be honest with you, after it was done because uh, I didn't like the look of it. I may actually repaint the canvas white um, because I, I actually scraped all the paint off and cleaned the canvas before it dried. That's, that's just to show you or just to tell you how... Um, how I did not let those layers dry, and I, I really don't like that. 
Um, but that's pretty much it, guys. I mean, it's it's gloss enamel paint. Um, just do it on canvas, right? You could now Pollock usually does it on flat canvas, or he usually did do it on flat canvas, so it wasn't stretched. It was uh, he would just get a roll of canvas, roll it out, and paint on it. But uh, I don't have any small rolls of canvas, and I didn't want to waste it. I just kind of wanted to show you guys the process and talk about it. Um, so that's pretty much it. I think I finish with yellow, and then I'm going to show you the painting. But that's pretty much it, guys. If you have any questions about it, please uh, leave them in the comment section or check out my other videos because I do talk more in depth about the Pollock style. Um, so I'm going to show you the painting, and then that's pretty much it. And uh, yeah, other than that, guys, I really hope that you have an awesome rest of your day and enjoyed this video. And yeah, that's it, guys. So have a good rest of your day. Take care.